Hello. Welcome to this class on Introduction to Java. Today we are going to uh, uh, talk about the basics of Java, what, what you're going to uh, learn in this series of lectures on the Java programming language, um, what are the requirements uh, to before that you should have before you take this class, and um, some fundamental reasons why someone, someone should learn Java. So, um, one of a few of our uh, requirements are that the student should have some basic some basic knowledge of programming in a procedural or uh, object oriented program language um, like C plus plus or C, or you know maybe even a spec scripting language like Perl, Python, Ruby and many language. But the basic um, uh, motivation for this these requirement is that um, we're going to talk about more more about the mechanics and the technical details of using Java to become a better, better programmer. While you might be learning some programming concepts, but we are not gearing towards teaching you the fundamentals of using data structure creation or the fundamentals of programming. So having some exposure to programming in general would be very helpful before you take this class. But uh, by no means, you know, if you can catch up, you can learn the basics of programming. If you don't get it on your own, you're welcome, more than welcome to continue on with this, this series of Java uh, lectures. With that, um, let's go dive into, you know, some base historical concept of what is Java. So Java uh, was originally uh, invented in 1991 with James Gosling at Sun Microsystems and uh, initially it's uh, the, pro the language's name was uh, Oak and was uh, developed as a part of this thing called Green Project at Sun Microsystems. It all started um, in about December 90 by Patrick Naughton, Mike Sheridan and James Gosling as they were chartered by Sun Microsystem to research, you know, where the world is going, what is it going to look like in the next 10-20 uh, years, and how Sun can take advantage of this new world, and uh, and uh, what they should do, what they sh new things they should invent to be, be a dominant force in this new world. So, you know, James Gosling, they talked to visionaries, they, they looked at the market surveys and how the computers were multiplying and were all the things that were going on at that time and they came to conclusion that uh, the next wave of computing might be the convergence of multiple digitally controlled consumer devices and computers which are connected and talking through a network basically they thought that we're going to have a lot of programmable devices or small computers Embed embedded in everything we use day to day. For example, they thought the refrigeration unit might have a program programmable uh, uh, attachment and the toaster might be programmable. So would be a microwave or oven or your cooking range and your television and they all have some of these programs running on each other and they all talk to each other. Uh, for ex example, uh, what is it? Um, your refrigerator can talk to some other computer system in the back end at a store and say I'm running low on bread and you know my owner over here he likes bread his bread toast every morning and we need some more and it can be uh, the refrigerator can order it automatically and those were the motivation uh, that James Gosling got for the market and where the world was heading and they came back to the labs to Sun Labs and they're like um, so what can we do to make sun, enable Sun to capture this this transformation in our world, and they're like, well, if that's where the world is heading, we're going to we need a mechanism through which a programmer can write a program in one language. He doesn't have to learn a million languages if they're going to have if we are going to have so many devices with uh, computers. So you don't have to learn a toaster language, a refrigerator language, a TV language. But it would be cool if we could program in one language and run that program on any device, anywhere. And that was the initial motivation and goal of Java. And, you know, so they went, came back and um, 
sun uh, and at sun and they created this uh, they created this the Java programming language and uh, they they went to the marketing guys and um, you know James Gosling had a big oak tree outside his office uh, window and he named it oak you know just you know that's what he saw every day so he named it oak uh, the language oak and they went to marketing and marketing said well oak there already exists a language called oak so you can't name it oak and somehow java was the next be uh, best name and it, so it came along and um, yeah that was the introduction of uh, how java this thing came along and so we were talking about what was the motivation we talked a little bit about you know this embedded computing computers everywhere and that's what the main reason why java came along and um, the first project they made using this java platform was a handled remote control called star 7 and this was very very much along where they were thinking they were thinking that remote control will have a computing uh, device within it in it and um, and t so will the tv and they should be able to talk to each other and they get a proof of concept of that Java. They've created this new language called Java and it can actually do this and hence Sun is better positioned for this new fe future of a lot of digital devices. And then then they took it to market and you know it was 1990 you know imagine uh, it was quite a while ago and they didn't have iPhones and all these apps and everything floating everywhere not so many devices and somehow people <laughs> didn't buy their vision and it didn't pick up as much but then they noticed that there was this thing called the world wide web or the internet which was just coming into existence and gaining a lot of popularity and they're like you know the internet has the same concept what they were to to what James Gosling and his team were uh, thinking about the future is going to be it is that there's a lot of different devices connected to a common network and they talk to each other but instead of uh, any device, the internet had only computers at that point in time, um, which were talking to each other. They're like, well, you know, Java can be used for just all the th all the computers that are you that are on the internet, and they can make new programs where these computers talk to each other. And so that became the next focus of Java. They, James Gosling and his team, they bet heavily on internet being at, as being the next big thing, and by creating a language targeting the next big thing this will become a very popular language and so they thought and as we know they were very correct because today java internet is the next big thing it has become big it's been 20 years nobody can live without uh, without the internet and most of you guys are probably watching this lecture through the internet and so i hope and um and Java, is, and from the latest uh, statistics that I have heard of, is is pr is I think has taken over C++ as being one of the most uh, the most popularly used programming language today, and most new code being written today is being written in the Java programming language. So it has become the cornerstone of today's uh, uh, internet economy, and so. Uh, now we're going to see that I uh, you know some some background about how Java came along. Um, you know why Java came along and what was, what is so cool about Java. And um, the reason people like Java is because of its some of its common uh, features. It has uh, this it enables you to write one program and run it anywhere like we talked about that was the main motivation and the way it does is by getting by using this thing called an interpreter which is known as the Java virtual machine and that Java virtual machine runs on um, every platform that Java supports and so you write some code this job and you somehow you do some magic and um, every say you know your your TV, your remote control, your cell phone, they have a Java virtual machine running. And when you you, you give this, um, you know, the code you have written to this Java virtual machine, it will know what to do. It will understand it. It will understand that language. The other thing, uh, cool thing about Java is, you know, it has this thing called garbage collector. We'll get back to it in a moment. 
and it has some se a lot of security features. We'll get back to that in a moment too as soon as I uh, explain to you guys how Java fundamentally works. And so, you know, most of you are probably familiar with the uh, uh, writing a program in Java. It's, since Java is an object-oriented programming language, everything has this thing called the uh, notion of classes. Um, classes are the basic fundamental uh, building blocks of an object-oriented pro uh, program. Um, so you write a Java source here, you know, let's call it hello world.java. And this is a class and we have a main method here. Main method is a method in a, in a Java program, which is the first one which gets called when the program execution starts. So, you know, the, the, inter the JVM enters this class and it says, oh, it's a main method. There can be a lot of these methods, but it'll first go to the main method. And whatever instruction it has over here, that's what it's going to execute. In this case, it has this this line, which is system dot out dot print ln print line, hello world. So, if you execute that line, it will print hello world on on your console. So the way it works is that we take this program called hello world dot java. We use a compiler. Uh, I'm hoping all of you are familiar with compiler. That's what converts a program into in from a human readable program over here into a, into something which a machine can read so when you uh, compile a program the way you would do that is that you type in uh, um, sorry type in java c hello world or java And this command is going to generate something called uh, hello world dot class. This is what this compiler is going to generate. And then now we can take this hello world dot class and we can feed it to an interpreter, which is also known as the JVM the Java virtual machine and this interpreter runs on multiple platforms say on a Windows computer on a Solaris computer by Oracle Sun and uh, on a Apple Macintosh and many other platforms like you know Windows mobile and some other mobile platforms like Symbian and uh, and uh, Symbian and many others. So you you take this hello world class and you feed it to this interpreter on any of these platforms and it will do the same thing. I don't have to write one, two, three, four, f and or you know this n number of programs again and again and again and again. So in a lot of big companies, before Java, you used to write one on one of these programs in like uh, in C, C plus plus. And then, for for make to make to make sure that this program runs on a different platform like Solaris or Macintosh, you sa you would have a separate team of ex additional developers or engineers who would convert it to a different platform. So, and the cost of entire of that team and that headache is now all gone with Java because Java takes care of it for you. So, essentially, that's how Java enables this. You know, you write the program once, and you run it anywhere multiple times so now with having the gained that knowledge let's go back into the key features of Java and uh, how what's great about them so the, we talked about the JVM and which is the interpreter and uh, how it runs it, it is what Sun uh, provides and it runs on multiple platforms and enables Java to be universally run everywhere. And another uh, uh, cool feature of Java is this thing called the garbage collector. The garbage collector is basically what manages Java's memory. You as a programmer are no longer 
have to deal with any memory management, which can make things really tricky. So if you, if you have programmed in C, C++, probably not in scripting languages, but in C, C++, you have to do something called a malloc. You have to do a malloc to allocate memory for an object, and you have to now do the uh, cleanup of this memory, like dialloc, um, after you're done using that object. With, and you, like if you have ever done something like that, you would know you can f forget to do this uh, cleanup, and then you'll have something called a memory leak. And memory leaks are really bad because, you know, especially in older computers, it has limited memory. Once you start leak, a program starts leaking memory, other programs run out of memory. Slowly, they became become slow because of this concept called paging. And eventually, you know, they will, the programs start crashing, and the user can, cannot use any of his programs, which is which is a bad thing. But Java kind of um, Java takes out the need to do this cleanup, so you don't have to remember to do this, and it automatically has this jar garbage collection mechanism. After you have you're done using an using using a program, it figures out what needs to be cleaned up, and it does the cleanup automatically. So, program is freed from the burden of having to like clean up the, the memory themselves. And uh, that's a that was a great feature for a lot of programmers. It made their life, uh, you know, a million times easier. Imagine having millions of objects and you forget like five or ten of them to be uh, when to do cleanup for them, and um, you would have a pro big program. It will just crash and burn. So. So that was a really cool thing about Java, and a lot of people know about it. And another thing, um, which we, which is less known, is a lot of code security features of Java. So as we talked about that, when we um, compile a, uh, compile a Java program, it generates a class file. And before, uh, you know, in C C plus plus, when you compile it, it would generate something called an um, object file and object file is closer to machine language it's for every specific platform for this there's for Macintosh it's going to be a separate object file and for Solaris another one and and, and so on and um, but because the class file has a lot of semantics which let somebody some external party verify if this code is bad if this thing is going to do something bad to the computer is, is does it have is it going to make the computer crash and it can do this verification um, when when the JVM when the interpreter loads this class file it, it can verify this code and that's what makes a lot of a uh, lot of code run in Java very secure and um, yep and with that those were the main features of Java and why people want to use Java in the next few lectures, we'll talk about writing some basic Java programs and, um, you know, m more advanced features of Java.